It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley are here. Minutes before the show began, a new build for Windows 11. We'll talk about Microsoft Family and the new Clip Champ. It's the new Windows Movie Maker. Plus, interop between Apple, Google, Mozilla, and Microsoft. And Halo Co-op is delayed again. Paul explains co-op to Mary Jo and a lot more. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This, this is Twit. Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 767, recorded Wednesday, March 9th, 2022. Searching for Longhorn. This episode of Windows Weekly is brought to you by New Relic. That next midnight call is just waiting to happen. Get New Relic before it does so you can get back to sleep. You can get access to the whole New Relic platform and 100 gigabytes of data free per month forever. No credit card required when you sign up at newrelic.com slash windows. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we cover the latest news from Microsoft with Barry Joe Foley from ZDNet. Hello, dozers. <laughs> we got to learn the Spanish word for dozer. We I do. think it's dozer, actually. <laughs> That's Paul Therat, therat.com. Uh, not in Mexico this year, this week. He's, uh, mm -hmm. he's back home. Uh, although you never know with Paul, <laughs> he could be leaving really? tomorrow. Really? Because it's snow. It's snowing outside right now. You're wishing. Yeah, it's you're snowing. Wishing. It's snowing here too. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> yep. This is. Uh, is this considered a late? No, March comes in. I remember this from my years. And in, like in, a lion. And out like a lamb. Right. Yeah. Yep. So this is the right? lion. Yep. It's not. It's not. It's not going to be much. But yeah. No, it was seventy two days ago here. So literally, weird. it was 70. so weird. Yeah. Spring is always <laughs> is always weird. Yep. All right. Well, it was good talking to you guys. I'm uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> I'm off to Mexico, he says. He's off for a nap. <laughs> yep. um, all right. What is going on in the world of... I had to, I had to gird my loins. What is, <laughs> what is going on in the world of Windows 11? And what is ClipChamp? Mm -hmm. If I might ask. <laughs> Do you remember we couldn't pronounce that? Oh, this, when Microsoft is, uh, this is Panos yeah. Panay's new uh, Clippy. Clip yeah, Champ, I think chip. we were calling clip it. Chip. Clip Chip. Clip yeah. Chip. Yeah. Clip Chip. Yeah, so we just got a build right before the show Oh, started. nice. Oh, good. Woohoo. Yep. Yep. And uh, let's see, what's new? They're, they're adding more inbox apps, which are like preloaded apps, including the family app, which is family safety, right? For, with mm -hmm. the parental controls and the location tracking, if you want to have that turned on. And ClipChamp, which is the little video editing app that they bought last September. Um, so it lets you do video creation, editing. It has a lot of different editing tools um, that are embedded in the app. And that's going to be an inbox app now. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm interested in that. You know, Microsoft, of course, used to have Windows Movie Maker, which, by the way, evolved right. into a great little app, actually. And mm -hmm. eventually became mm -hmm. Windows Live Movie Maker, I think, was part of Essentials. Yep. Um, I don't... They couldn't have just kept kept that going, huh? They just... <laughs> <laughs> by a company. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, it looks okay. I, the, the weird little yeah. word they had about it here was that they called out the uh, the timeline at the bottom yeah. of the app, which is where you you know position clips and yep. so forth. And they sort of mm -hmm. said something to the effect of, well, you know, this is usually really hard to use, but in this app, it's really easy. It's like, guys, you yeah. you had something that was really easy to use like 10 years ago. What are you talking about? <laughs> so, so this is Windows Movie Maker for a new a new era? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's kind of. <laughs> it's an external company that they bought. So it's a, it's a completely yeah. separate product. But yeah, it's essentially the modern replacement for mm -hmm. Movie Maker, which really hasn't been officially available no, this is good. Years, right? I get this call yeah. a lot on the radio show. How do I edit uh, movies in mm -hmm. Windows? Uh, yeah. And I think because the expectations there, because of Movie Maker, and of course on that's right mm -hmm. on Mac. Yeah, no. Yeah, I, I, by the way, I, yeah. one of the things I was really looking forward to with this Android compatibility was looking at some of the Android video editors because there are some decent ones out in the world. Yeah, and of course it's Amazon, and so you get this. You know, we talked about this how terrible the app selection is. So that may ne never happen. So. Hopefully this is good. I'd like something as well. Mm -hmm. And it is timeline editing, which is good. You, mm -hmm. I, yeah. I don't think it's good to learn a different way of editing since any mm -hmm. any right. pro app is going to work with a timeline. So right. might as well learn that. Right. Looks pretty yeah, nice, when they bought actually. It, 
Yeah, when they bought it last year, they said, you know, we're going to integrate it with Office 365 for consumers and businesses. And they never said, and by the way, we're going to make it a free inbox app with Windows 11. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Right. Right. No, I think this is a good move on Microsoft's part. I think yeah, people do I want do too. a video editor. Yeah. 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 It comes with a lot um, of features, lots of templates. There's a clip. It does. Clip art, yeah. you know, stock footage library. and Yeah. Oh, don't worry, Leo. You the version they put in Windows won't have any of that. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm looking at the ClipChamp site. Is this now? Yeah. A, yeah, it's a Microsoft site. Yeah, it's a Microsoft. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, if you go to uh, the blog post, there's a picture of the editor the, mm -hmm. of the, uh, sorry, the, the, I want to call it a native app. I'm not even sure it's a native app. Whatever the app is, we'll have to. Right. Right. We'll have to look. Try it out. I'm curious yeah. about it. Mm -hmm. uh, good. Yeah. That's a good um, reason. And that will be Windows 11 only, or do these uh, toys go to Windows yeah. 10 ever? That's a good question. Yep. <laughs> it's a, we don't it's know. a good question. Right now, I mean, Windows what I'm Windows guessing, Windows. I guess they won't bring it back to Windows 10, but what they'll do is they'll make it part of like an Office 365 subscription, right? So mm -hmm. uh, if you have consumer or business, you're going to get it that way. Well, I mean, if you go to the ClipChamp website today, is there a download for a Windows app? I don't know. I haven't, I haven't tried downloading it. Yeah, I, I, yeah I think so. Yep. I think so. So if there is, it's likely it's that app, you know, maybe an updated yeah. version. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, there's an app in the uh, Microsoft Store. Oh, there okay. is. There yeah. You See? Yeah. What's it say? Does Everyone it say works on it. Windows 10? <laughs> well, uh, let's see. Well, let's see. I guess it would because they announced this in September last year before they. No, that was yeah. after they announced Windows 11, so maybe not. <laughs> this is a tw June 23, 2021, so yes. The answer would be yes, because there was no Windows 11 at the time. Yeah, true. Unless true. they've changed that. Yep. That's a good point. Unless they've changed mm -hmm. that. Hmm. Huh. Yeah, you know, ever since they didn't get TikTok, for better or for worse, and it didn't end yeah, up behind better, them. <laughs> for better, I think, yeah. Um, they've always been looking for like, okay, we still need something to ha to kind of fill that space. They have Flipgrid in the education market, right? And um, right. that's really big in the education market, but it hasn't translated over to the other markets like oh, mainstream consumer, oh. I don't think. Hold on there. I don't know if Microsoft will stop this, but it works with a Chromebook. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold they on. They shouldn't. They should not if they're smart. Oh, if they my. Want yeah, because there's a browser a plug in. Right. Yeah. And there's a mobile right. app. Oh, yeah. that's very interesting. Wow. Yeah. Is an iOS app. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Right. So, I mean, a Apple released yeah. something which they kind of, you know, like very Apple way called mm -hmm. Clips. And mm -hmm. uh, they kind of pay attention to it and then they forget about it and then they pay attention to it again. But it was also kind of their response to TikTok. Like, oh, don't yeah. edit in TikTok, which by the way, the mm -hmm. you know, the real TikTokers do. They just do it all in, in sure in mm -hmm. TikTok. But don't they don't edit in TikTok, edit in clips and then you can share it to all your social media. And I thought mm -hmm. uh, so that's I guess the same strategy. Uh, in a it way, is, right? but I bet clips is not available on the web and No, 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 no. It's only iOS. <laughs> yeah. Know, yeah. Yeah. So Interesting. Yeah, when you have the a dominant mobile platform, you can pretty much just use, you know, focus on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. when you don't, um, you make things yeah. available everywhere. That's right. Right. Uh, okay, now, there's one else? thing in today's build that is very distressing to me. Yes, I know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> they're taking out the Notepad. Search. It, oh. no, the search. The widgetization of search. <laughs> is that what yeah, it is? Yeah, they're doing a yeah. bunch of tweaks to the search um, mm -hmm. capability that's going to be in Windows 11. So right now, if you click on search, you know, that's pinned to your taskbar or through the start menu, you come up with something and it has a, your recent apps, has top apps, recent apps, quick searches. Quick searches are things like movies, markets today, today in history, right? So what they're going to do is take all those things that are in quick searches that are kind of like low key, kind of buried a little bit in the current search. And they're going to really make them front and center when you click on search. So it's going to almost look like the Bing image of the day from the descriptions of this. It's going to have um, like images, word of the day, holidays. And I'm like, nope. No and no. I don't want that. I don't want any of that in my search box. <laughs> yeah, it's just garbage that you're not looking for. It's extra. Uh, no. I, uh, I, and so, no. And you know what? 
I'll tell you, I don't know if you guys have this experience or if anybody listening to the show is having this. Search for me is barely working in Windows 11 as it is now. Like when I click on that search bar, uh, that search icon in my taskbar, I'd say mm. about eight times out of 10, it crashes. When it doesn't crash, it takes forever to load. I like I, I'm like waiting for it to load, waiting, waiting, waiting. I'm like, what? What is going on with Search? Right. <laughs> the thing I like so, about Search in uh, Windows 11 is that I have spent the past two months writing about Longhorn again. And yeah, when I search for yeah. Longhorn, the thing that comes up first is Longhorn Steakhouse, a casual dining restaurant chain. <laughs> um, so yeah, handy I mean, and useful, right? Yeah, you guys get me. I, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, I, I'm. I my the first thing when I saw all these search things was there's got to be a way to turn it off. There has to be, right? And there is. They give you instructions in there. There will be a way for individuals to turn this off. There will be a way yeah. for admins to turn it off globally for their users. There's going to be ways. But I don't like that they're doing this. It's like the MSNification of everything, and we don't need that. We don't want. I, and I need agree with that. you. I, so. I had this weird thought today when I started reading the blog post describing these two <laughs> two new two new inbox apps as they call them in mm -hmm. Dashbox, right? Like yeah. They're in the box, right. which there's yep. no box, but whatever. Right. Um, these new features <laughs> to search and elsewhere, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, this is there's a gr there's a group of people they listen to the show, right? They may not be the normal people out in the world per se, like yeah. a average consumers, they're tech people, whatever. That mm -hmm. look at Windows 11 and they say, you know, I like the way this thing looks. I, what I want them to do is update everything, right? You've got these Melon mm -hmm. calendar apps we've been talking about that need this one uh, one Outlook replacement. Modernize all the UIs, right? I don't want to see Windows 95 UIs, Vista UIs, Windows 7 UIs, yeah. Windows 8 UIs. I want to see, I want right. everything to look the same. And I, I've, I've sort of cautioned people like that in the past, like that's never going to happen, you know? But I think this kind of drives that home, right? Um, they're pushing forward with new stuff. And I don't mean this in a cynical way. It's just the reality of the situation. It's fine. I mean, it's mm. just what it is. But... Um, they're going to provide new UIs for new things. Mm -hmm. There will be some major things like the One Outlook uh, app, you know, that will come. But I, I, you know, you <laughs> the search thing is interesting because search again, not to go back to Longhorn, but that's when they were talking about search and database backed mm -hmm. file systems, and yada yada yada, yep. and all the stuff. Yep. Apple showed off Instant Search and Tiger. This is like from mm -hmm. 2005, maybe a long time ago. That doesn't work today in Windows. <laughs> like, it just doesn't work. It, it's yeah. it's almost 20 years later. We still mm -hmm. don't, this stuff doesn't work, but they're not focused on that. They're focused on video editing and family safety through some what used to be a Windows Live service and I, just making search, you know, forget instant search. Now it's going to be cute, Mary Jo. You don't have to worry about search. Just look at all the fun stuff that's in search. You went to find something and we're going to show you something. It may not yeah. be what you were looking for, but it will be very graphical. You know? Right. And, you know, right um, now across the bar, top bar, when you click in, in the, on the search box, um, it lets yeah. you search within apps, within documents, within the web. Right. So yep, at least it. you have this image in your head that you're kind of constraining your search. I don't even know if it, that even works because most of the time it yeah. doesn't for me. Well, but yeah. I, but now that's gone, too. Right. So. When you click on this, there's just a search box. So if I type something and I'm like, I wonder if it's going to search my email. There's no way to even see that. Right. Yeah. Okay. So there is an email right? a choice, but it's in a drop down. Um, okay. So presumably that would appear in the results, although I. You know, but you don't know from email. their new design. All you see in the new design is recent along a left bar. You see a right. big picture, and in their picture, it's got like a picture of Earth Day, right? <laughs> trending searches under that. I don't care about trending searches. I don't yeah. care about Earth. I hate yeah. the Earth. Okay. I hate it. I hate. Right? Like I just. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I, guys, you know All what? Right. I, when I click on search, nine times out of 10, I'm trying to search something in my sure. OneDrive or on my PC. I'm not trying to And this do is where actually, see, this to me is where Windows falls <laughs> apart. Uh, and, and right? <laughs> I, look, I'm searching for files. It's every, that's period. Right. I mean, and that's me, but whatever, that's fine. But right. uh, that is where Windows search falls apart, file search. Yeah. And in, in the start, uh, sorry, in Windows 11, when you type, uh, I just keep, I keep typing Longhorn for some reason. I can't get this out of my head. It, <laughs> it wants to autocomplete Steakhouse now. That's hilarious. Anyway. Yeah. Um, you type Longhorn it, and it says Steakhouse? Oh, I yeah, get it. It actually Longhorn adds Steakhouse, Steakhouse to the end of it. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. But the thing is, what I'm looking for is, uh, is files. And like Mary Jo said, I can go to the Documents tab. Yeah. And it shows me a couple of things. 
But then at the bottom, it's, it's only a couple of things. And it's not the thing I'm looking for. It's not the thing I was look, working on most recently, in fact. So one of the choices is search file explorer. Uh, yeah, file explorer. Mm -hmm. That takes a long time. Yeah. It's searching your entire uh, yep. hard drive or whatever you have. And my, look, that stuff, I know, I know, because I'm me. I mean, I know where it is roughly, but it, it, it takes it a long time. Yeah, And then there's no uh, order. There's no way to say, well, okay, sort this by most recently accessed, sort this mm -mm. by location, sort this by nope. date. That's not there. It's very it's primitive, not. despite very. the fact that, again, Microsoft executives st stood on stage 15 years ago, at whatever many, almost 20 years ago, and yeah. showed us how awesome this was going to be. <laughs> you know, and right. It's right. just not there. Yeah, I just, I worry about this stuff. You know, I, I, yeah. I know everybody's, and Micah always says this jokingly, I hope, that I hate consumers. I don't hate consumers. <laughs> I, but you know what? I, I think would never this, say that, by the way. That's Micah like always jokes consumers. about me hating consumers. Um, but he just means you love enterprise. <laughs> that's all. Right. Yeah, yeah. But it's, this isn't even about that, right? Like this is just about just make search work on my PC, yes. whether I'm a business or a normal user. I yes. just want, like when I type in the search box, I want you to find the results that are on my PC. That's what, I don't mm -hmm. care about the Bing results. I don't even care about that. Like, I don't, I don't want you to give me an image of the day. I don't want you Guys, to show me the word of the day. this way they can what it is, but <laughs> the I'm really in the mood for a steak restaurant. It's up 100%. <laughs> you're not even using yeah. Bing, but you're using Bing, right? Yeah, exactly. Is there a way to turn that off? Bing. No, I think there is, right? Can you be, unhook yeah. Bing from this? I think God. there is. No, I don't think so. Not that oh, well, that's that, really That was terrible. a big controversy if that's true. That's um, terrible. Well, let's take a look. Straight I know, that really I'm is terrible. Too. That's not good. I think there must be a I way. I don't want Bing in my <laughs> search results. I mean, I no, might. Or, or you it, should be able to choose, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to be able to turn that off. That. If, I think... Uh, I don't... Oh, everybody, this is a very common thing. For some reason, operating systems think, oh, you're searching. You should search more than just your hard drive. Yes. Yeah. You should search the world. And I see well, this. It's, it sounds It sounds like a good idea until you actually see search results yeah. and then you realize. But people yeah. also uh, want to have a tool that does what they expect it to do. They right. don't want additional right. stuff. Yeah cropping up yeah. well uh, right okay you guys you're asking for an impossibility this thing should <laughs> well it should work well from the get-go because most people aren't going to screw around with it and, and configure things yeah right. but there should be an option for people who really care to say look I, i'm only ever going to want to search my hard drive or right. my documents yep. folder that's or my right. one drive whatever that should be available and that does not exist because that's not within the business right. <laughs> goal of this interface right yeah it's there's not. a so it, that's it's not just a i'll tell you who hates consumers microsoft I mean, that's, that's a little user hostile, I think. Yeah. That's saying your, well, the, your right. needs are trumped by our business interests. Yeah. Look, well, I, yeah. I don't and think most, right. <laughs> people do, well, most people don't think of this, but when Apple got up on stage yesterday or Microsoft gets up on stage on whatever time or Google or anybody, you know, they're presenting things that make sense to them as a business, and but they're selling it in a way that makes sense to you. You as the consumer hear all the good stuff about you. And when you hear... You can search across your hard drive. You can search across the web. It sounds good. It, it makes for a good demo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds But really, good. That's right. the, the point of this wasn't we want to help people. Uh, that has to exist for anyone to even use it. But the point of this is how can we make this viable as a business for us? Right. And, and, uh, and everything points back, easily. right? Everything they're doing with Edge, with Windows 11, points back to them trying to grow two things. They're trying to grow Bing's market share and they're trying to mm -hmm. grow their ad share through Bing, through MSN and other similar properties. That's what they're trying to do, right? I get that's their goal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think you're right. I think like when you're using search inside of Windows, you have to use, I don't know if it's, is it Bing that you're using? I just looked at, I don't PC? see any, yeah, it is Bing. And <laughs> It because when Bing. you go to a web, okay. yeah, 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 it comes up on, on Bing. I know I on the web you're using Bing unless you switch out of it, but like Right, internally? and the only reason they let you switch out of that in Edge is because that's the expected behavior of every single person on Earth yeah. who uses a web browser. Yeah, if Microsoft made a choose. web browser that only searched with Bing, no one would use it. Right. That would literally right. be a non-starter for people, right? That's true. So they can right. get away with it in the OS just like Apple gets away with it in um, iOS and Google does in Android yeah. because it's not really advertised. 
You're just searching mm -hmm. the, you know, they don't really push the Bing notion of it. Um, right. It doesn't tell you you're how searching you're searching the, the web. Right. You're not searching Bing. Yeah. But if you right. bring up, if you do look at one of those results, you'll see it comes, it's Bing. It is Bing. Yeah. All the web results you get through searches are definitely on Bing. Of right? course. Yeah. 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 Well, it's understandable. I mean, I just, I just, yeah. I, it just, yeah, that part doesn't really irk me as long as, as long as it works and as long as it isn't slow. And those are the two things that are not true of search in Windows 11 right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. It's not. Yeah. I want them to fix search like this searching inside of an operating system is kind of one of the top things that people do, or I would imagine that people would do. I would. I don't know. <laughs> so the, the problem is, I think uh, for like, and I think this applies to a lot of people who listen to the show or watch it. Um, yeah. You yeah. because you're technical and because you've seen limitations when you use standard UIs, you have you develop your mm -hmm. own way of doing things. Right. Right. So yeah, and I I I have things. It's it's an odd thing from when I am going back into my archives. Sorry for this article series. I'm actually ac accessing those files from a NAS. But if I have mm -hmm. to search for something that's somewhere in those archives, I search the version yeah. up in OneDrive because for whatever reason, when I search from OneDrive, that <laughs> is actually much yeah. faster yeah. Uh, from a web browser. So that happens to work yeah, really it well is. for me. It totally does. Um, that that You're right. It For me, it takes a while to like first index that. But yeah. once it does, then it does search much I faster. Have, I than mean, the yeah, I, I, I have navigation issues with OneDrive on the web and that's whatever. But as far <laughs> yeah. as like, I literally, yeah. all I have to see is where it is and then you can right click and show, I don't remember the exact phrasing, but it's basically show containing folder. I can find out where it is and then I just go look at it on my NAS. <laughs> you know, it's just, yeah. I know it's a goofy workaround, but for me that just works well because the yeah. default UIs and windows are just not of any interest to me. Like the start searching, you're asking questions. I had to go look at it. I'm like, I don't even use this thing. I, it, and now I use it. I'm like, oh, that's why, because it's terrible. Yeah. So this thing I've been writing about for two months doesn't even come up, you know, which I I think is unbelievable. I just don't understand. <laughs> I don't, this, I'm looking at, I just don't understand how they thought this is what I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's very strange. Well, it's not what you want. It's what you're going to get. And that's, that's right. all yeah. that matters. That's a good point. I wonder, okay, I'm, I'm super curious what kind of feedback they get from the insiders on this. Like, are they just going to be like, yeah, that's beautiful. I love it. It's like the image of the day. It's a great thing. Or are people going to say, guys, like, why are we cluttering the search box even more than it's already cluttered? Yeah. Like, can't, can't yeah. do they Remember there was a really good disk search tool called X1 mm -hmm. way back in the day. Oh, boy, yeah. Do you remember that? Okay. I wonder if they're yeah. still around because... I mean, this is an well, opportunity for somebody to do a really... F it was always faster mm -hmm. than Windows search. There in was fact, a version of Windows, it might have been Vista, but it, it might have been Post Vista, where they would index the drive. Yeah. And so, because you have to, right? That's how you, you get instant Windows search results. Now. You have to, yeah. You end it, right. But, yeah. but, in the, but the way this used to work was, literally the second you stopped interacting with the computer, it would start indexing the drive. And the little light would come on and you'd hear it. We had hard drives back then. So you'd hear it. It would go, Bruh. and people would say, what the heck is this thing doing? I'm not even using it. It's like freaking out. And um, Microsoft said, oh, it's okay. We're indexing the drive. It's like, no, I don't, I'm not using the computer. Don't do anything. <laughs> like, what are you doing? And um, I, I don't know. I, I Honestly, these features probably are driven by feedback. I bet these pretty pictures you're worried about in yeah. start search are going to drive yeah. usage. That's the point of it. People are like, oh, look, a, a picture of a kitten. You know, yeah, X1 is a lot of people like X1 the image of the day. X1.com <laughs> is $79 a year, though. Chat room mm -hmm. saying there are two free things that do this called everything and ultra search. So mm -hmm. you could just install a third party search and you wouldn't get mm -hmm. the picture of the day and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I liked X1 because it was so fast. You type one letter, it would give yeah. you all the results. Yeah. Yep. Then the second letter would narrow it, third letter would narrow it. So it was sure. very, very fast. Uh, and it could search into emails and stuff like that. I don't. I don't actually care enough. I didn't. I should say I didn't care enough to look. But when I was writing about this stuff, like I said, Apple did this incredible demo for Tiger, whatever year that was, two thousand five ish, where they did instant search. Same thing you just described. Spotlight. You type a letter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It comes up. I yeah. wonder if Apple has kind of toned that stuff down over the years, just because, oh, it's like still Windows, there. Microsoft has, because people probably just don't use it that much. You know. Maybe that's it. So, yeah, it doesn't do that narrow down thing anymore. 
Um, yeah, I, I think know. that's I probably like. because we have millions of files now on our hard drives, and the indexing mm. takes so mm. long, and to keep it yes. up to date, that is using a lot of CPU. Power, or so yeah, a lot of people that. probably just use files up in the cloud. I don't know. Can you not still though hit Windows key and start typing? And yes, you can. So that's can. the search I always use. Yeah. Yes, that's that's what she's describing. That doesn't pull up yeah. Bing pictures when I do it. No, it does. So yeah, so oh, or will. This is what we're talking about. So <laughs> oh, now the, the way really it works mad. in Windows 11 today is you get the default view is called All, and it's a combination of apps. I don't know why apps would be for. Well, I guess I do know why. Apps, documents, web. And then yeah. there's a more drop down. You get email and other things, and the the you know the first column is best match. This is where I see that Longhorn Steakhouse thing. I, I it's mm. the best match, despite the fact that I've never selected it and have tried repeatedly to ignore it. It keeps showing me Longhorn Steakhouse. Mm. Um, and actually, on the right side, uh, it says open results in browser under a picture of a map where I can see the Longhorn Steakhouses in my area, and it's a little Bing symbol right next to it. Mm -hmm. To let you know that's how it's going to work, you know. Yeah. Now you could go over to apps and just see the Longhorn related apps on my computer, of which there are none, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. uh, documents. And that <laughs> it still amazes me. There's three documents in the list, and I, I yeah. have possibly accessed ten thousand yeah. documents just with the name Same. Longhorn in there. Yeah. I, I, it's unbelievable yeah. uh, how yeah. worthless this is. Right. But there you go. Could use work for sure. I mean, I'm not saying I don't think they could make the search box better and the search experience better. I'm not sure by making it prettier, it does anything to make it better. I will say this, <laughs> just in their defense. I don't use this anyway, yep. so I don't really care. So yeah, right. it's kind of an interesting intellectual exercise to look at it and say, yeah, mm -hmm. it's still lousy. Good. Yeah. Uh, but the truth is I don't... Because this has never worked well for me, I don't even think of this. And so when I go yeah. to find things, I have just have a different approach. You just start typing, right? And Well, I do. Yeah. No, I go to specific places in the file system and search from there. Okay. You know, that kind of yeah. thing. But right. I think what they're trying to do, Microsoft, is create an interface that people will use. And like I said, with the business impetus of driving people to Bing and Emerson services in some yeah. capacity. And I'm sure... Mm -hmm with the positive message of we've delivered some value because, you know, you tried to find a cute mm -hmm. kitten video on the internet and you found it. Yeah. Or whatever it yep. is you're looking for, you normal person. Right. You. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's my guess. I don't know. It made me sad. <laughs> this is the blog post, you mean, the, the uh, where they describe the, the, new, like, the search highlights. This. Yeah. I almost, every time I feel like I keep coming... <laughs> No, I keep coming back to, okay, so nobody must be using widgets. So they keep thinking, okay, no one's using widgets. How can we get the MSN content in front of them somehow, right? Yeah. Like if they won't click on the widget, even if we put the cute yeah. weather button over there and they accidentally click on it sometimes, what's another way we can get that content in their face? What if we throw it into the search box, right? And then they'll see it. <laughs> Yeah, you can definitely, as Kev is saying, you can go and configure all these things, right? You can configure search right now. You can make well, it so you don't, you never see web results if you want it, right? But is that true? Yeah, you can. Oh, yeah, you can shut off web results. Yep, you can. Oh, okay. Yep. Um, There's a way. You go um, privacy and you go uh, settings, privacy and security, search inside of Windows. Um, and then you can, sh I think there's an option that just says, don't show me sur I find web it search amusing results. that there's a, uh, a link from start search that goes to someplace else, by the way. <laughs> uh, but okay. Search, uh, uh, privacy and security where? Searching windows? Yeah. yeah. Is that what you said? Okay. Yep. That's not what happens. <laughs> when okay. You, uh, uh, that's funny. Okay. Okay. I see. Yep, you yeah. could do this. And this is what normal people do. They'll uh, configure the, the locations on their hard drive that they want search to look at. They'll <laughs> exclude folders. Nobody's ever going to do this. No, right? exactly. I mean, the people listening to the right. show, absolutely. Um, yeah, yep. Absolutely. Yep. And my God, if there isn't an indexing options uh, control panel that literally dates back to Windows Vista, but here <laughs> it is. Yep, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. 
Anyway, that was the thing. Oh, one other thing we didn't mention. We had talked about this on the show back in early February, but the new Defender preview, oh, yeah. which is the one that kind of changes Defender so that it lets you manage your um, phones also in addition to your PC, that is now available. Like Microsoft's now saying, oh, it's available. It's been available for a while if you knew to look for it, but it's available to insiders and the U.S. and English only right now for them to try as well. They kind of gave a throwaway line on that today. So, Yeah, this blog post is like an example of PTSD. <laughs> it's, it's literally, um, <laughs> here, here are two icons in the entire system that we have updated to the new style. Two icons <laughs> um, are in this build, right? <laughs> like this is... This is what I was talking about earlier. They're they're absolutely going to add all kinds of new stuff to Windows 11. And it's yeah. going to give it that kind of surface level sheen of being something new. Mm -hmm. But for mm -hmm. those of you or us out there who use very specific interfaces, um, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> you yeah, know, I don't think right. it's all going to get updated. I just, I really don't. No, I don't either. Uh, I think definitely not. Ahead. In, not this year, at least, right? <laughs> yeah. I'd love to yeah. be proven wrong. I really would. I bet you're not wrong. So, yeah. It's okay. I like Windows 11. Yeah. I never I know. use search. You keep telling us that. I, I like I it. I ignore the like things it. that offend it's me. It's good. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like it mostly. I just am like, okay, guys, like, you know, keep going on the right path with it. And don't clutter it up yeah. with a lot yeah, of yeah. junk. <laughs> yeah. Junk. Junk. Just like IE, right? I mean, sorry, IE. I just called it IE. Edge. Edge. <laughs> which is absolutely like edge, cluttered with junk. Edge Speaking started out like really clean, right? And like really awesome. And everybody's like, yeah, we should all try using Edge. And then suddenly they started letting all these like weird features creep yeah. in that were mostly meant well, to help monetize it, right? So you're, it, what you're describing of Edge is what is uh, actually essentially what I'm saying about Windows, which is what I would say about mm -hmm. modern music or whatever. It's not for me anymore, right? Like these yeah. things, they're adding features to attract people. Uh, to use this product. And um, for people like us that actually just want to get stuff done, what we're really asking for is like this stripped down, really minimalist system. And I could just add the stuff that I want and I and just get out of my way and let me go. You know, Microsoft used to use this language like we're, we're not, we're not we're going to focus on the Chrome of the application. We're going to let the content come to the middle. You know, that was the whole thing. But I think yeah. now they're just looking for eyeballs, you know? Yeah. And they're not going to find them here. Right. You know, I just don't, I just don't care about this new stuff. Yep. I don't, I, I'm not going to open search so I can see pretty pictures of Earth Day or whatever they're celebrating <laughs> yeah. today. Or, I, you know, I just you make know. it my wallpaper. I like the Bing wallpaper and I just make it my wallpaper. Yeah, I like that. Right. I get to see it. You know, yeah. it's different. I, my wife turned on her laptop on the plane and this gorgeous photo yeah. came up on her lock screen. It was, be it's just beautiful. Yeah. You know? Image and of the day is that, that window it spotlight. Is. Yeah, that stuff yeah. is, I like that kind of stuff. But yeah. there you go. I mean, I don't know why there's a line with me. I mean, I once I get into the system, I guess I just want to get work done. And it's like, yeah. look, there's little yep. fireworks here in the corner. It's like, no, I don't care about the fireworks. I'm trying to, trying to write a document, <laughs> you know? I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. That was today's yeah. build. Anyway. That was today's build. Yes. <laughs> How's the uh, subsystem for Android holding up? Mm. Um, <laughs> it's holding up fine. I, I, you know, the problem, like we've been saying, is there's not a great selection of apps and games. Um, there's a release today. There was a release today or yesterday, but I think in the last 24 hours for the dev channel. So if you're on the dev channel, there's an update to the Android subsystem. It improves performance, especially uh, for, for games. It's just really interesting um, because those games are all kind of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> but mm -hmm. anyway, they're they're doing deeper integration between that subsystem and Windows, which makes sense. We've seen that on the uh, Linux side as well, the subsystem for Linux. Um, so, yeah, they're just trying to improve that. I mean, but from a fundamental standpoint, the issue with this isn't this kind of stuff per se, although this will help. It's the uh, just the quality of the selection of the apps and so forth. Yeah. But uh, I, I, I suspect, like everything else in Windows 11, the situation with this particular feature a year from now will be, you know, different from what was when we, we got the first preview back in whenever that was, February, whatever. Mm. Um, yeah, it'll just improve over time. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> also, also U.S. only. Yes to D was patch Tuesday. Yep. 
Any, yeah. uh, well, we don't usually cover this, but this one was actually no. kind Even of an important Steve one. Steve had nothing to say. Well, he, yeah. he may next well, week. Yeah. He there, was, there was one thing they fixed that Windows users will care about. Oh, Remember that? Yes. Remember that bug that we talked about a week or two ago where when you were resetting a Windows 10 or 11 PC, some uh, user data may have stayed on there in the windows.old folder. <laughs> and an MVP discovered this and Microsoft's like, oh yeah, yeah. you're right. <laughs> so they, you, we had a work, they had a workaround, which was make sure you disconnect one drive before you reset your PC, which probably most people don't do. But don't yesterday as part of Patch would. Tuesday, right? They, mm -hmm. they said, okay, we fixed it. So if you apply the patches... Um, from Patch Tuesday on Windows 10 and 11, it'll get rid of that bug that let user data remain when you reset. Did they ever say how far back this went? Um, they said it, it applies to Windows 10, 21H2, 21H1, and 20H2. So t Windows 10, Boy. 20H2 is the first build where that seems to have been a problem. Well, if you're a PC maker that has uh, taken one of my <laughs> dozens of returns to your factories, right? Me please too. enjoy my personal data. Same. Yep. Same here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I, I was like panicking because I remember when I had, I, I'm glad it didn't apply to Windows 7 because I had that Windows 7 desktop I had had for 12 years or whatever. And <laughs> I gave it, right. did I ever tell you guys what I did with that? I started to bring yeah. it to a place to uh, donate it for education. And so I got in a cab lugging this giant um, Windows Windows uh, 7 desktop. It yeah. was like a Dell Optiplex. I, I, got, I hail a cab, I get in the cab, and the guy goes to me, where are you going? And I'm like, I'm going to go donate this PC. He's like, I'll <laughs> like take I'm it. I'm going to the river. <laughs> what? No, he's like, I'll take it. He's like, I'll take it. My daughter needs a PC. And I'm, oh, no. he's like, what's on it? And I said, I reset it from Windows 7 to 10. But yeah, it's like legitimate copy and everything. He goes, okay. I'll let you off right here and I'm taking it. I'm like, go ahead. <laughs> wow. That's great. Okay. I have an old Traeger barbecue I could give him. Uh, yep. Yeah, you see him again. But it pa I, for a minute I panicked and I'm like, oh man, what if like that PC I just gave to this has random every, taxi your driver? Bank account on it. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's really a That's sweet funny. story, man. And they say New Yorkers are cold and heartless. Yeah, no, he's like, I have my daughter. Just pulled a gun on you no, and yeah, I'll it. take it. No, I'll take it. He, I don't care. No, because I had I had yeah. it in the back seat. I'm like holding it, this giant like Dell Optiplex. Why were you carrying like, it around? I was trying to bring it because the donation center wouldn't come pick oh, it up. Oh, I they see. Said, you were you trying bring to donate it to it. us. I get. So I brought I it. it out to get in a cab to go to the donation center, and this guy's like, "Where are you going with that PC?" Donation center. You got a real. You got a real deal there. Yeah. You you did get the ride for free. I hope. I did. Yeah. I did. That worked out yeah. great. It did. I love New York. <laughs> That's oh, hysterical. Man. What a good story. <laughs> That's fantastic. You should just get in uh, random cabs with laptops all the time. I should. Yeah. Hey, what, what, how far can I go for a ride if I give you this? From now on, instead of having Leah's garage <laughs> sale in the conference room, I'm just onesie twosieing everything. <laughs> oh, we don't have cabs here. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, let's take a little. Actually, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I'm gonna take a little break because you guys, you've been working hard, you've been slaving over a hot podcast all morning. So I'm gonna give you a little break, and we'll come back and we'll talk about uh, more stuff, including uh, an Xbox segment. Our show today, though, brought to you by. I want to mention it because I love these guys, New Relic, and you, if you don't know about New Relic, will love these guys too. If you're an IT or sysadmin or you run a network, you know. The thing you dread is the 3 a.m. phone call. Remember uh, in the, the couple of presidential elections ago, that was the, the campaign thing was, will he be ready for the 3 a.m. phone call? <laughs> well, it's, it's not, uh, it's not pre President Gorbachev calling. The 3 a.m. phone call from an IT point of view is that one where uh, the server's down, the app's not working, I don't know what's going on with the cloud. Or maybe it's just a, you know, a beeper message saying, eh, 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 and it's in the middle of the night. You, you're in the, you're cozy, dreaming your sweet dreams, and you got to jump up and figure out what went wrong. And, uh, you know, this runs through your mind. It could be all sorts of things. It could be that deploy you just pushed. That would be bad, right? You got to 
rewrite that code, or maybe it's not your fault. Maybe it's the the back end, or maybe it's the server, or maybe it's the cloud provider, or maybe uh, your database is just you know full. <laughs> And and then, you know, if you're lucky, you got a team, but then now they're woken up in the middle of the night. They're scrambling around and nobody knows what's going on. You're running a bunch of different tools trying to diagnose it. The problem right here, my friend, I can tell you right now, you know what the problem is? Lack of observability. That's the term, I guess, of art for this. New Relic did a uh, study. They found that only half of all organizations implement observability for their networks and systems. That means there's half where you're getting the 3 a.m. phone call. Not if you got New Relic. Because New Relic is all you need to know exactly what's going on at any given time. So when you get that call, look, nobody's going to stop that call. Things go wrong. But when you get that call, you could jump up, fire up New Relic, go, I see what's wrong, fix it. You can even, if it's in your code... New Relic has application monitoring and APM. You can even go down to the line of code where the issue is. Say, oh, that should have been that should have been negative one. Fix it, and you're back to bed before you're even before you're even fully awake. Sixteen different monitoring products you'd normally buy separately. The lead engineering team see across the entire software stack in one place. Uh, you get, as I mentioned, application monitoring, a unified set of uh, monitoring for your apps and microservices. You get Kubernetes Pixie. Do you know about If you use Kubernetes, you really need Pixie. It, it gives you observability across all your installations. You got distributed tracing, so you can see all your traces without management headaches to find and fix issues fast. You know exactly where that data stopped. Network performance monitoring that eliminates the siloed tools for a system-wide correlated view. More than 14,000 companies rely on, depend on, require new Relic to debug and improve their software. DoorDash uses it. GitHub uses it. I think that's a Microsoft company. Epic Games uses it. Whether you run a cloud-native startup or a Fortune 500 company, it just takes five minutes to set up new Relic in your environment. And I have the best news for you. It's free. You get access to the whole new Relic platform and 100 gigabytes of data free per month forever. You don't even need to give them a credit card to do that. So there's no reason why you can't, right this minute, install new Relic. You don't have to get anybody's approval. You don't have to get a credit card. Nothing. Just put it on there that way because you know there's going to be a midnight call sometime in the next <laughs> week, month, days. And you'll want to have New Relic ready. Sign up at newrelic.com slash windows. That next midnight call is just waiting to happen. Get New Relic before it does. New Relic, N-E-W-R-E-L-I-C, newrelic.com slash windows. And then when that phone rings in the middle of the night, you can answer it and fix it and get back to bed. Newrelic.com slash windows. Windows. Back we go to Paul and Mary Jo, who probably does get 3 a.m. wake-ups from her cat. I do. I'm guessing <laughs> Sirachi. We had, you know, yeah. last night, you know, I'm, I look over Lisa's head. She's fast asleep. And there's Paris sitting bolt upright, staring at me. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, they used to say that you don't let cats near babies because they'll steal their breath. <laughs> <laughs> I think she was planning. She was plotting. She, how do I steal this guy's breath? I know I can. Um, all right. Microsoft Teams. We haven't talked about them in a few minutes. What's the latest? You see where I am on the it's rundown? You, yeah, if, it's we, not, yeah. It's not Microsoft Teams. It's Microsoft Partners with. Oh, <laughs> you see, when you use the words Microsoft and Teams, I, I saw, I saw uh, your no, confusion. I, yeah, I'm like Microsoft Teams. Microsoft lowercase teams, teams with Apple? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, so last year, uh, Microsoft and Google joined a group of other web browser makers and people with interest in the web uh, market to improve the compatibility and interoperability of certain HTML standards or how their browsers rendered those things. Uh, this year, they're at it again. Apple, uh, Mozilla are involved as well. Uh, they've renamed it. For some reason, this is an initiative. It's not really an official thing, but it's called Compat 2021 this year. Last year, it was Interrupt. I'm sorry. It's, this year, it's called Interrupt 2022. Last year, it was called Compat 2021. But they have a specific list of 
areas of interoperability they're looking at, you know, related to cascading style sheets and different things like that. Uh, Microsoft is primarily focused on a very specific thing, the CSS subgrid, um, which is apparently, I assume, is one of the 10 top areas for this year. Uh, they never called that out. Um, but anyway, they're all working on this stuff together, which I think is great. So uh, web standards exist for a reason. I don't know why this is even necessary, but apparently there are still issues using different web browsers. Maybe we need little buttons on sites that say, you know, this site is best viewed. I don't know. It's just an idea from <laughs> something you can do. That would probably work, too. I think someone's tried so, that, haven't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sounds, does that sound familiar? <laughs> yeah. So okay, that's, that's that, huh? All right. Yeah, there's not much time. That was exciting. No. Yeah. Um, but we do need to do that. I mean, I, I think they need to do that. In fact, yeah. didn't they, uh, I don't remember if Microsoft was part of the Matter Coalition where all these uh, oh. uh, IoT folks finally said, you know, yeah. we got to have interoperability between these. I don't think they have protocols. enough stake They're in probably the not. end yeah. user part of that market. Yeah. But, but Google and yeah, Apple. I mean, they have and, obviously, yeah. yeah, people that would... Be part of the Matter Initiative would build might build Interop products based important. on Microsoft IoT technology. In fact, there's a bill we were talking on Sunday. Cory Doctorow was on, and he's very up on legislation. He's a big fan of the Access Bill. Uh, there's both House and Senate uh, versions of that, where mm -hmm. it requires interoperability. Yeah, I think yeah. that's you know that's what it used to be, right? In the old days, when it was a bunch of equals. But now when you right. have giants, there's no incentive to say, oh, no, no, we mm -hmm. want a data Yeah, cycle. I mean, it's uh, not that I necessarily think this future should have happened, but if there was that requirement today, you might make the argument that Cortana might still be a thing because right. that compatibility would have mm -hmm. just been right. automatic. Right. Yeah. yeah. And you could, you know, Facebook would not be so uh, giant because you could port your data out into something else. And et cetera, oh, my God. Et cetera, Can you imagine if you could get your Facebook data and put it somewhere else? Yeah. Easily. <laughs> like That's probably the standard. primary goal of that bill yeah. i'm sure yeah um the ukraine war drags on what a nightmare a hellscape mm. uh yeah. russia is suffering you know what's sad is that there's plenty of innocent p civilians in russia who have to suffer because of this just as there are innocent civilians in ukraine really well yeah if and, we could only get it, that you got to remember gun. this is an authoritative uh, authoritarian yeah, government Putin. that is lying to their people. Yeah. If you were to poll someone on the streets of Russia, I think a lot of those people would think that what they were doing was great. Yeah, or <laughs> denatifying was the right thing to do. Yeah. You know? yeah. Uh, so obviously, uh, we don't want to get in a shooting war with Russia, uh, but we have <laughs> these economic sanctions. They seem to be taking hold, and uh, Microsoft is participating. Yes. Kind of. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> Not wholeheartedly. What is Microsoft well, doing? Yeah. So Friday, they announced they were, they were suspending all new sales of products and services in Russia. Yeah. So that does not mean existing contracts or sales, right? Um, the trick here is there are sanctions imposed by the U.S., the U.K., and the European Union that may cover some of those existing contracts. So there may be some cases where existing contracts and, and pro of products and services are halted in Russia, but Microsoft only committed publicly to halting new sales. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, it's something. Some people were disappointed in, in what they said. They're like, yes, it doesn't go far enough. But, you know, there are a lot of things to think about on this. Like, like some people brought up well, there are also agencies in Russia that may be helping people or, you know, not everybody right. is doing what Putin wants, yep. you know, so you can't just, you know, say, okay, cut off Russia, even though that's what we're basically doing here in the U.S. now. But, um, you know, I, I, I understand the, that it's a nuanced thing, but I also think some people were like, okay, Microsoft, really, you know, put some pressure on them and, and you can decide if you think that was enough or not enough. Jeez. They also, you know what, they didn't talk about their Russian office either. Microsoft, I believe, has a fairly large office in Russia, at least one office. And I, I asked them about that, and they said, we have nothing to say about that office. So I'm like, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> I think Russia, so, yeah. you know, back when Windows XP Starter Edition was a thing, the Russian market was mm -hmm. one of the first markets for that product. Yeah. I remember and Mar that. Yeah. Russia at the time was probably a big source of uh, pirated software. So I think mm -hmm. that, I don't remember what the program was called, but uh, after their antitrust stuff, they opened up um, 
labs so that governments could look at the source code for Windows yeah. and their other products to prove that they weren't uh, uh, back doors, right? And I think yeah. Russia was mm -hmm. part of that uh, process mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. on the governmental level. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, we do uh, business with, you know, people are, you know, if you hate the uh, EU antitrust laws, why don't you just not sell products in the EU? Or if you hate China so much because right. they're a humanitarian disaster, um, just don't do business with Russia or with uh, China, you know? And like, that's a cute thing to say when you're an individual, <laughs> you know, it's a little... <laughs> yeah. It's a little harder for companies to uh, to take those steps. So it is, yep. Yeah. yeah. So it's something, right? I I think I had heard somewhere that it affects like one percent or less than one percent of Microsoft's business. What they did, um, yeah. You know, but but it's it's also Ceremonial. important for image. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I mean, and this is not what we would talk about, but there's uh, calls on restaurant chains and food stores and things to not do business with Russia. And it's oh, like, yeah, well, McDonald's is closed. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I hear you, but there's it, it also an issue there where, the, like Leo said, the people there are victims in their own way as well. Oh, God, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to sell food now to the people of this country. Well, they can't get money have, out of the ATM. They can't, I mean, yeah. this is right. getting uh, to be yeah. the rubles worth pennies. No, mm -hmm. less than a penny. Uh, yeah. This well, is really getting dire. Uh, mm -hmm. For the people, you could be sure Putin's got all the steak and lobster he wants. Uh, yeah. I bet his Longhorn Steakhouse is open. For example. His Longhorn is <laughs> he's got his own Longhorn in the Dasha, <laughs> as well as a McDonald's. But uh, right. yeah, so that's the problem. Um, and I don't, yeah. I don't know, yeah. boy, I don't know what the long run solution is yeah. going to be. This is just awful. Just awful. It is. It really is. Yeah. So sad. Um, so yeah, it's hard when a company has to decide on sanctions. There's, there's the kind yeah. of the greenwashing style sanctions, which make you look good, but right. don't, don't maybe really, maybe even do worse harm. Mm. And then there's the, well, the, I look, it, you can't, it, well, you could, I guess there are probably examples of this, but I think most companies can't just ignore this. No, you can't. We're, we're not going to rise above this. You have terrible. to do so. Yeah. So you, you pay lip service to it. You're at least right. showing your support. Um, you know, Tim Cook wore Ukrainian colors yesterday, by the way. Yeah, wasn't that, that interesting? They didn't yeah. say anything. Um, <laughs> no. But uh, he wore a blue shirt and a very yeah. bright yellow uh, watch band. Right. And, uh, so you kind of do those little things you yeah. can do. Um, yeah. That's very yeah. little. <laughs> That's about as it little is. as you can. As, oh, you know, yeah. okay, I'll wear a yellow t-shirt. Well, it's not the only I mean, thing. No, it's not the only thing Apple did. But no, I, in fact, they, but, they did more. And, it, and yeah. again, that's a perfect example because they shut down the App Store as did Google. And then right. some people, I've talked to some people who say, you know, uh, there's somebody in the Discord. He says, I have a friend who's trying to get out of Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. if you don't have signal and you can't get signal in the mm -hmm. App Store, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. not good. So right. you know it's um, it's a mixed bag, and so it's very hard mm -hmm. to know what what you're what what you're doing, what the impact will be. Yeah. I think you had to, you know Apple had to do it, Google had to do it, but uh, mm -hmm. there might be side you know unintended uh, side effects yeah. on the on the people of Russia. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I I mean, what are we trying to do? Get them to rise up against Putin? I don't right. know. If that's I don't think you're going to see that feasible. happening. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, not that there is not a history of that in Russia, but it's mm. hmm. true. <sighs> Let's see. Okay. Let's talk about a funnier place like China. Oh my! <laughs> and this is, but see, this is another example of you also have to do things because the country insists on it, right? Yeah. Right. right. So the timing of this was really interesting. So the same day that Microsoft announced they were imposing the sanctions on new contracts in Russia, they also quietly posted a blog post about China. And they didn't bring it to anyone's attention, but they, the um, news in China is they're opening their fifth Azure cloud region in China. It's open now. And they work with a company there called 21 Vionet to run it because there are rules in China that, that um, Chinese businesses have to run these kinds of things. So this is, this is huge, right? Because Microsoft said, as of... This opening, I don't know how you pronounce the city or the region, H-E-B-E-I, Hebei. Um, as of this opening this week, it doubles Microsoft's cloud capacity in China. That's how big that data wow. region is. Hmm. Right. is it Hubei or H-E-B-E-I? H -E -E H -E -E yeah, it's in yeah. North China. Yeah. Um, 
It's their fifth region. It has all the usual services available there, Azure, Dynamics, Power Platform, Office 365. Um, and, you know, people say, oh, why are they doing that? Because China is the fastest growing public cloud market in the world. It's growing. It grew last year at 50%. Yeah. So that's why they're doing it. I mean, it's crazy, but it's it's just a huge market for them and they're not stopping business there, right? Yeah. They also yeah. announced um, this week that they're going to be opening... Um, their biggest data center in India, they didn't give a date on this in, in how do you pronounce this? Hyder, Hyderabad. Hyderabad, right? yeah. Hyderabad. Yeah. Um, they, I think it'll probably be in a couple of years, but that's going to be their biggest data center in India. Wow. So now, Microsoft is that a legal year, requirement as well, or is that just because no, they should have No, they can run there. it themselves. Yeah. They, can, yeah. they, they just have a lot of business and yeah. a lot of their offices in they India need, also. Yeah. They, I think yeah, that's they the need tech the center for that country, yeah. isn't it? Hyderabad is, yeah. Hyderabad. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's going to be really huge. I think that that may be also their fifth one in India. And uh, last year, Microsoft said they were on pace to open between 50 and 100 data centers a year. Um, that's how fast the cloud is growing for mm. Microsoft. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. This is, it's we, we're, it's a <laughs> we're in a global, it's a global business. It is. It's a global yeah. business. Yep. Uh, finally, Microsoft revamps its program for startups. Yeah, this is this is kind of interesting too. If you're a startup, before a lot of a lot of cloud companies, not just Microsoft, they would have a lot of different requirements if a startup wanted to get in their like uh, startup program. Microsoft's is called the Microsoft for Startups Founders Hub. It's kind of an unwieldy name, but um, yep. you, in, in the older days, you'd have to have like venture capital behind you, or you'd have to have an affiliation with an incubator. Like there are all these ways that kind of prevented true startups from getting in and getting things like Azure credits and credits for GitHub and Office 365. But yesterday, Microsoft announced this new, this new program, Startup Founders Hub, um, there's basically no wall to get in. You can just be somebody with an idea and come to Microsoft and, and apply and say, I, want, I, th I have this idea and I want some Azure credits. I want to play around with the cloud. And you can get in at a pretty easy level, it sounds like. Um, you start out with $1,000 of credits per year if you just have an idea. And then if you get all the way up to actually starting your business and trying to scale it out, $120,000 worth of credits, right? So... It's, it's big. It's a big program. And, you know, Microsoft is very interested in trying to get startups in its camp, um, especially in the cloud side, because that's where Amazon has a lot of success and Google has a lot of success. Um, they're, they're very well connected to the whole startup world and startup community. So Microsoft's like, okay, let's just drop the barriers, make it super easy to get in. And hopefully we can hook some of these businesses at a very early stage and get them on Azure and on our products too. So yeah, pretty pretty interesting what they're doing there to try to grow that part of the business. Yeah. Okay, Mary Jo, um, go make a sandwich. It's that time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, time to pat the pat the cat. Uh, okay. Coming up, Jeez. it's Xbox time. Jeez. Well, Paul, Paul like, Thorat. Paul Thorat is our Xbox guru. As I mentioned, Paul, I put Elden Ring on the Xbox One. I yep. presume you're not playing that silly game. I am not. No, I'm not. Yeah. It's a very difficult. I game. feel like Mary Jo is not playing uh, Halo Infinite on Xbox because they have not enabled co-op yet. Oh, she's waiting she's for waiting it. for it. Yeah, she likes PvP. What is co-op? <laughs> Well, uh, cooperative Joe, play. In other the words, cake is a lie. That's all I can say. Yeah, okay. I think That's I, all I, I want to say know. this started. I think it was Halo th Three. I could be completely wrong on that, but at some point they added a, a co-op mode to the single-player campaigns in Halo, and, the, and in other games have this as well. But it's a big thing in Halo, and uh, this dates back to the times when you would sit in front of a TV with one screen and one console, and you could split the screen, so you could have like two people side by side. You could have four people in a grid. And you could all play together. You could play multiplayer that way, which was tough because people would cheat and look at your screen. I sometimes um, I call it sofa mode. 
So, so that <laughs> you and others are on a sofa together. We're looking at the same screen playing the game together. Yeah. So one of the big controversies with Halo Infinite is that they delayed it a year and that, you know, the first, the thing they were going to release looked horrible. Uh, and then they delayed it a year, and yet they still didn't have co-op ready a year later, which everyone was like, okay, okay that's kind of weird. And they said, it's all right, we're gonna, or, we'll add it in the spring. Um, they delayed the first, I guess we'll call it the second season, technically, the next season, whatever season it is, uh, the next or first season of uh, Halo Infinite until May, I think was the date. Um Presumably, so they could get co-op working before then. That's not going to happen now. So it's been delayed again, or as I call it, and this keeps coming up for some reason today, they longhorned it. <laughs> See what I did there? Um, anyway, <laughs> it is coming eventually, but it's going to be later than we expected. Um, in the good news department, we do have a new monthly Xbox system update that arrived today. So if you have an Xbox One Series X or S. Uh, you can download that now. There's nothing, I wouldn't call any of this major. The big thing uh, is this ability to pin games to quick resume. And what that means is that uh, you now have a group called, um, a, a group in your games list called quick resume. These are games that you want to quickly resume, right? Using the quick resume feature. So you can have the games you use most often be there and those things will start up quickly. You'll have a, a quick place to, to go to those. But um, a couple of other small features, but... Not, not a big, big deal, but that is out today. And then um, they didn't release this entire list, but Microsoft announced today that they have over 40 new games coming to the Xbox platform over the next, I'm not sure, if I could say five weeks, I guess. And yeah, between March 8th and April 11th. And so they've released a list of the first batch. They're going to release them in weekly allotments. Um, these are just, these are not all Microsoft games. I mean, I should say across the platform. So MLB The Show is coming uh, this week, which is nice because MLB The Real Life thing is not coming this week. So uh, that'll be fun. Um, and that's uh, that's the big one that I saw on that list. So I wish I had brought an Xbox to Mexico with me because I got to tell you, I could have used that um, r release of frustration <laughs> or stress or whatever when I was away. But instead, I sat in a dark room and stayed with my wife. And <laughs> we did that instead. That was, that was fun, too. That's the other kind of couch mode. <laughs> mm -hmm, exactly. Much less fun. It's like, you want to do something? No. No. Are you hungry? Not really. I see. What, they don't have a TV in this new apartment? No, they do. They, <laughs> it's uh, all in Spanish? Did, Is that the yeah. problem? No. I, the last uh, place we stayed was fantastic, and they had uh, the only downside was the... The, t the Apple TV was so slow, you couldn't even use it. Oh. And um, they actually updated it, apparently, since I mentioned that. But this new place had two TVs, and um, it was fine. But I just, I, did, we, I think we were <laughs> just kind of click. We're like, I don't know. I just, you were in shock. <laughs> yeah. You, you, were, you were saying to yourself, what have we done? Yeah. Not well. Uh, it's just nothing, nothing. I don't know what to say. I don't know. Nothing. It's just, it's not simple. It's not easy. I guess. It's not, it's not easy. Simple. It's not easy. It's not, it's not easy. I understand. It's not uh, no, I completely understand. I am. There was I a moment we were signing papers, literally, and the guy representing us and the, one of the developers realized they had gone to the same school and they were like busily chatting like little oh. girls. And I was like, "Hey, guys, trying to make a real estate <laughs> transaction. Over here. Can we focus for a second? <laughs> you're gonna have to get used like, to that. <laughs> they're like high five at each other. You're gonna I'm have like, to hey, get guys. used to that. Mexico. You know? Nobody's in a hurry in Mexico. It's that's one of the <laughs> benefits. Like, listen, just, you just need to focus on this for like five uh, minutes here. It's a just, very relaxed society. Rain it in. Very relaxed. I don't know. Is it, but the food's good. The coffee's good, right? Yep. The yeah, chocolate's good. Yeah. Uh, is, is there lots of music you can go see? Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, Mexico's uh, going to be a major destination for concerts for sure. Yeah. So, Sports, uh, too, by the way. Yeah. You know? Sports? You're going to have mm -hmm. to learn the rules of soccer. Mm -hmm. I the think I uh, am going to arrive just in time for uh, bullfighting to no longer be a thing in Mexico City. Oh, so. gosh. It still is? That's kind of a shock. I believe so, yeah. 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 When we were in Spain, you know, places, every yeah. city had a bull ring. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it was kind of surprising yep. that it's still around. I think, um, you know, Barcelona had gotten rid of it a long time ago, but Madrid yeah. had still had it when oh, we yeah. were there, but they d they weren't doing it at the good. time. Good, good, good. Yeah. Yeah. It's a poor bull. Poor little bull. Uh <laughs> Um, the March 2022 20, Xbox update is here. This is good to know. I like to know these ahead of time so that I know when I get home, <laughs> yeah. I can't play my game. 
I have to wait. Right. By the way, um, uh, if <laughs> Brad sent me this, but we, we had watched this series. So there's a uh, a series on Apple TV. Oh God, what's it? The, it oh geez, it's the comedy series with Steve Carell. Or maybe it's not on the Apple Office. TV, no, no, it's the com the new comedy series. The oh, Space it's like Force. The Space Force. Space whatever. Force. So there's a, there's a great scene in this thing where they're trying to fix. They're trying to do something remotely so they can fix the satellite and get every, you know the astronauts back and. Windows 10 doesn't update. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a great this is a great moment where everyone rants about Windows and Microsoft. You and know this, you're yeah. mainstream when uh, you know yeah. a, a sitcom yeah, yeah. that's it one of good. the sits. Right. I, maybe it's not on that. Maybe it's on Hulu or Amazon or something. Space Force is a um, HBO, I think. HBO. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I actually yeah, had to make a looking spreadsheet. <laughs> Because I couldn't keep track of where yeah. all the shows are. Oh no, we do this. We don't have a. We make a list because we keep forgetting. We're, we'll finish. What are one. we watching? Yeah, and I'll, we'll, this is my wife and I don't really argue a lot about things. I mean, obviously the money stuff. But now with this is stressful, whatever. But um, but honestly, the thing we argue about the most is probably TV. What to watch? Because yeah. we'll sit there for forty <laughs> minutes and not find anything. And I'll be like, I thought you said you made a list. And she's like, I can't find it. And I said, and she's like, well, you know, you do all the TV stuff. I'm like, I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know where things are. Paul, just a hint we, we, from a, mm. a man who's been married many times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Let her decide. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and uh, basically, never, you know, don't take the remote away. It's uh, Well, actually, so what she wants me to do is say. I know. She wants you to do Here's the, the series we're gonna, I think we're yeah. going to watch next because I know you'll like it. She, that's what she wants me to okay. say. Okay. Good, good. And I don't, I just don't ever remember. I'm like, I remember we mentioned something. I have an ob Obsidian is my uh, note keeping app. In fact, I'm opening it yeah. right now. My, I have an Obsidian um, page that has want to watch, are watching, yeah. That's good. And, go. and have watched. And then, in, and then in each one, of course, has to have the most important part, where to watch. Right. Mm -hmm. of course, yeah, that's a huge problem today. <laughs> like, what's it on? Oh, gosh, it's right. all over and There are the shows place. coming down the pike. I know I'm going to have to get, like, Peacock yeah. Network or yeah. one of these yeah. other things. Like, I, I Paramount just, Plus, yep. Peacock. Fortunately, a lot of what we want to watch these days is on Hulu. Right, mm -hmm. right. That's the next thing. We're, actually, I do know, by the way, I, did, I figured that out at lunch today. I have the next series, so we're good. <laughs> Oh, what is it? Tell watch. me. I need. Uh, I believe Holmes, it's called the right? drop. The dropout. The, it's the yes, Elizabeth Holmes. You picked Holmes it. Mary Jo picked it. Up. Lisa and I are uh, two two episodes in and, and How enjoying is it? it. Is it good? Yeah, it's good. Okay. Yeah, I'm on Inventing good. Anna now. Thanks. Love to that. Finish that. that. Right. Which Finish is fantastic. That. Yep. Yep. Uh, so we just watched. But since we're on this topic, not to turn this into a different <laughs> show, there's something called the Tinder Swindler. Yes. Which is not as serious and should be. Yeah. I just want to warn everybody about this. It's a movie. It's a documentary movie. I guess. Yeah. Um. This one does not end in, on a positive note in any way, shape, or form. So if you're looking for like a, a story a like beat. this inventing Anna thing and, and you want it to end well, don't, don't yeah. watch this. Worse uh, than it that. Is, yeah. He's out yeah, and awful. about swindling. Yeah. He's like yeah, a, It's unbelievable. Yeah. And everyone who worked with him on all of this stuff he did, yeah. never been charged with anything. No, no punishment. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's awful. It's like, it's awful. Ooh. Well, okay. As long as we're talking about... Depressing endings. I know you need more depression in your life, Paul. Uh, have you? So, did you ever watch Yellowstone? No. Oh, okay. You no. Put that on the I list. I heard it's great. Right? It's the it's Sopranos. I heard it starts great and gets. Not it goes so up and down. Episode. It's four seasons. Yeah. It goes up and down. There's some, you know, the halfway through some seasons. The Power of the Dog. Also, speaking of westerns, was very. Did you good. like it? I did not. I liked it. It's going to win an Oscar. It's going to be Best Picture. It was but good. Not I a fan. It. The scenery alone. It's beautiful. Is pretty. It's beautiful. <laughs> Benedict Cumberbatch is a cowboy. A little a bit of a stretch. A little hard to understand. Yeah. He's not. Yes. He's not. He didn't. He did no. not nail it. It didn't work. No. Yeah. Huh. Uh, everybody else is great in it. Kirsten Dunst. Yeah. Uh, is fantastic. Yeah. Her husband. She was. Yeah. Um, so uh, Yellowstone must watch. Sopranos meets. It's Sopranos with horses. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and Kevin Costner. Sopranos. But then it's so successful. It's actually saved Paramount Plus. Wow. wow. So they've got the guy who created it, Taylor Sheridan, who is actually in it. Not a good actor. So, you know, immediately that, that guy is not an actor, <laughs> but he can ride a horse like no one's business. Anyway, <laughs> he's been commissioned to like write 20 more series mm. uh, for Paramount <laughs> Plus. So the first one was the prequel 1883, which is about the, the Oregon Trail and the pioneers 
getting、hmm. to Montana so they can start. The ranch that Yellowstone will cover、yeah. seven generations later. And then he's going to do that generation after generation.、Uh, so, anyway, 1883, but a warning with 1883. The ending is depressing as hell. Okay,、oh、that's、boy. all I'm going to say.、Mm. Still worth watching because、yeah. it's the most, and I, this is why it's depressing, realistic depiction、mm. of what it must have been to be a pioneer、okay. on the Oregon Trail. And、gotcha. it's got Sam Elliott. And、who doesn't、yeah. love Sam Elliott? <laughs> so, okay, we have really, we have really、uh, <laughs> gone off the rails. <laughs> As Frosty Winnipeg says, worst road trip ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. That, <laughs> the Donner Pass was pretty bad. Well, they、too. didn't even get That's the sad thing. They didn't even get to the Donner Pass. They were going to、yeah. get it. But, the, well, anyway, you'll, I don't want to spoil it.、No. Okay. Um, okay, did we cover everything in the Xbox? Section, yeah, yeah. Did you want to do the 40 new games coming this spring? No, we only know a few of them.、Um, <laughs> now you really know Paul, when Paul says, Yeah, okay, I don't care. That's bad. Is it, is it,、uh, is it morning after regret, or you just no, I don't, re- I don't regret it. I just want it to be over with. Yeah, yeah, it's a pain.、Yeah. I want to move on. Yeah. You know? Do you buy it outright like, or do you、um, only get a 99 year lease? It used to be you'd only get a 99 year lease. No, no, it's, it's all right. That, that's, um, the thing you're referring to, so there is a, if you move within some distance of the coast or the borders of the yeah, country, yeah, yeah. you have to, you get what is essentially a trust and it's a 99 year something. And we actually don't know what's going to happen after that, but I mean, they'll probably just move it another 99 years or something. You're not going to be alive for 99 years of owning. Well, that's why no one cares. cares. Yeah,、right. yeah, exactly.、Right. Uh, no, but in, in the interior of the country, the, the 99% of it doesn't whatever, matter.、Um, you can just own it outright. Nice. Yeah. Lovely. Yes. Lovely. All right. Well, I'm just I'm stalling because we have to separate the ads by a certain amount of content. <laughs> we, can't just, we can't just pile them all on. <laughs> Any other shows you want to talk about? Oh, there's Sirachi. <laughs> Sirachi could do a little dance for us, something like that. He、right. could. He could. Um, <laughs> Have you seen What We Do in the Shadows? That's pretty good. That's on Hulu.、Uh-uh. No. Yeah, I like that. I'm、But、waiting I, for The Handmaid's Tale to come back.、Oh, I want it to come back. Talk about grim. Oh, the oh, ending、yeah. of that thing?、Oh. Holy,、yeah. you know what? It never, <laughs> it, it, yeah, you think that it can't get any darker <laughs> or more awful. I know.、Yeah. The well, ending, I, know, I actually I, was screaming in my living room、uh, on the ending of the last one. <laughs> I couldn't even get through the first few episodes, so it's、oh. good to know. I mean, it was so grim. <laughs> I, it's, just like,、uh, uh, it's really well done, though, you have to admit. Well, and, and I was sadly I, too believable. That's the problem. I was watching it <laughs>、right. during the Trump era. <laughs> so it、right. was like, well, that's、oh, right. This right. thing is, a, right. This this is, thing is not, like a prediction. This, exactly. This is not、yeah. fiction. Yeah. Right.、Uh, and of course,、uh, let's see what else.、Uh, there's some good food shows. Somebody Feed Phil is, I'm told,、yeah. very good. Yeah, I like that guy. Yeah.、Um, Um, the one with the guy.、Uh, He goes in, to Mexico City. There's a good episode. Yeah.、There. Yeah. Oh, you've seen things. h a n g s out with、okay. the owner of Pool Hall. And,、um, oh, nice. Get yeah, that mole. Get that mole. <laughs>、um, didn't get, I didn't have a single bite of mole on this trip. Well, that's See, that's why, why you're doing that. The, the whole thing went south. It just, it just didn't. Oh, Paul. No pun intended. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, t- <laughs> Watch the dropout. Watch the dropout. I'll cheer you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, very, I'm quite familiar with the story. I mean, there's a. I listened to an audio. So it's、uh, based on the, the podcast. podcast. Yeah. Yeah.、Um, yeah. And I read the John Kerry book,、mm-hmm. which is, only starts like later.、Uh, mm-hmm. This starts like when she's a kid. And so it gives you a little more, and I hope it's accurate. I think it is, more understanding of、mm-hmm. how. Because, you know, that's the question everybody asks is like, well, how did this happen? Did she plan this from the beginning to be a big con or. Uh, or no, I think there's a big fake it till you make it thing in、yeah. uh, Silicon Valley, especially. <laughs>、yeah. But, well, we mentioned those two stories about、um, uh, the Tinder swindler and the inventing anything. These people have, the, you know, you get spam calls that try to get money from you, but these are from people in a distant country that、right. don't know you, will never see you.、Right. But, but how much crazier it is to, for a scam to work, these people have to interact with you on a daily basis, fall in love with you, or pretend they're falling in、yeah. love with you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, like those people are pathological. Yeah. And at some point, Elizabeth Holmes had to have turned into that. She had to have just decided,、yeah. we're going for this. I'm going to swindle people to their face. <laughs> you know?、Mm-hmm. I mean,、yeah. that's, that takes a, 
That's well, a, watch it because they're a form of insanity. What, I mean, and again, yeah. I don't know how accurate this is and how much insight yeah. they had into her thinking, but what this show sets it up very nicely as you see how mm -hmm. she gets drawn into it mm -hmm. initially with good intentions, but right, right, kind of naive and somewhat yep. ignorant gets drawn into it, and then at some point can't yep. you know you can't get out. And mm -hmm. I think that that's uh, I think that's probably accurate. You know, mm -hmm. um, good. All right, I think we found some good shows to watch. So now, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just tie it back to the last thing we talked about. Don't watch them on an Xbox. That's a really inefficient way to watch those. There shows. you go, yeah. perfectly done. Very mm -hmm. nice. Nice. Uh, it is time for the back of. Well, it will be in a moment. Time for the back of the book. And now that moment has passed, and the back of the book time has come. <laughs> it's a short I don't moment. understand time, Leo. I know. Believe me. I, so uh, it's it's complicated. It's complicated. <laughs> Paul Therott, your yeah. tip of the Yeah, week. last week, for whatever reason, I had two tips. This week, I have two app picks, oh. just to kind of make up for that. Nice. Both of these are just ideas for alternatives, uh, just based on recent uh, events. Um, the first is Brave. Uh, this has come up a lot. I, like I said, I still feel this way. I feel like I'm tunneling toward Brave. Like, I'm going to end up at Brave uh, someday, uh, the web browser. This is the... the well, the very uh, anti-tracking, privacy focus, et cetera, third-party Chromium-based browser. Um, they have, they are soon picking up a new feature called unlinkable bouncing, which is yet another uh, anti-tracking feature. This is actually really interesting to me. And the way this works is every time you visit a site that is thought to be or could be uh, suspicious for some reason, in that it will not, it, they suspect that it will try to track your uh, your personal data. They will generate a unique first-time, uh, you know, digital profile for you, and then erase it when you leave. And so it's kind of like when you use a credit card and they they give you a fake number to make a purchase, and it only works for that one time. It basically stops sites from tying your footprint to previous visits. You always look like a first-time visitor. Um, so if you're if you're in Brave Nightly, which is like their, um, you know, obviously pre-release version uh, nightly build. You can get that now, but it's going to come to stable very soon in version 1.37. And I guess this is a part of a suite of features that are coming, which they call first-party ephemeral storage, um, which they describe as being uh, similar to but more powerful and friendly than clearing your browser storage every single time you leave a site, right? I think if you're super uh, worried about the web tracking you around, that's I guess that's one of the strategies. You can sit there and keep clearing your cache whatever, but uh, they're going to build that right into the browser. So I think that's smart. Uh, that's cool. And then uh, Corel Draw, uh, Corel, I should say, Corel Draw usually every year releases a new version of the Corel Draw graphics suite, right? So there's, I know there was one in 2020, there was one in 2021. That usually happens around this time of year. There's not one yet for, or at least for, at least yet for 2022. But the thing that has switched over there over the years, like it has elsewhere, is there are standalone versions of the product that you buy. So you buy, you know, that 2021 version, that's your, yours forever. Or you subscribe, and in this case, it's an annual subscription. And when you subscribe, they give you roughly quarterly updates. I know there was one in October. There's one now in March. And uh, you just get that as part of your annual subscription. So kind of like Microsoft 365 or the Adobe stuff, except for... Uh, the uh, Corel Draw suite. So there's only a few updates here. I'm not a Corel uh, user per se. I'm not actually an Adobe user either. So, but if you're looking for an alternative to the Adobe Creative Suite stuff because it's expensive or whatever, uh, this might be something you want to look at because uh, it will be less expensive. The annual subscription for this, for example, is $269 a year. Or you can just buy it outright, you know, for five hundred and fifty. So, um, if you're interested in this, you should check it out and also check out what they add to it over time because I think that's where it gets interesting. In the same way that Microsoft three sixty five gets interesting over time because they keep, you know, adding to it. So there you go. They keep adding to it, <laughs> kind of like the um, the search stuff they're adding to Windows eleven. It's just like yes. um, they add kittens yeah. to it and stuff. It's fine. <laughs> Enterprise <laughs> pick of the week. Um, boy, this took a long time to close. Holy cow. Yeah, it did. Yeah. yeah. So Friday, Friday was a very big day for Microsoft last week. They announced the sanctions with Russia, the Azure data center in China, and they also announced that they completed the Nuance acquisition. That was like almost a year from when they announced that they were planning to buy them. Um the reason it took so long was there was more, probably, 
I can't say for sure because they were very secretive about it, but there's normally regulatory scrutiny of these kinds of deals. And now with the climate against big tech, there was probably even more regulatory scrutiny than before on this deal. So this is Microsoft's second largest acquisition currently. Um, LinkedIn, 26.2 billion. Nuance, 19.7. If Activision goes through, that'll obviously the big, be the biggest at 69 billion. Um, but what's very interesting to me about Nuance is a lot of people just think of them as a healthcare uh, voice recognition company. They're, they popularize the Dragon uh, voice system and it's mostly used currently in healthcare. But they also have pretty big businesses in finance, retail, and telecommunications, all areas where Microsoft also has very big vertical market presence. And they have already started working. This is really interesting. They've already started working with the Dynamics team to take the Dynamics customer service product, combine it with Nuance technology, and create a contact center solution that they're going to sell using Nuance AI technology combined with Dynamics. So you can see that they're going to, Microsoft's going to take this Nuance AI technology and it's going to show up in a lot more places than just healthcare. Uh, so I'm, yeah, I'm very interested to see how this plays out and what kinds of new services they come up with for various vertical markets. Was it was it a year? How long? It was seemed like a long yeah, time ago. Yeah, eleven months. Wow. Eleven months. Yep. Wow. I'm, I'm yeah. sure Activision Blizzard will be like two, three months. It'll be fine. Right. See, <laughs> you know, we, we always do the news of the acquisition, but we, you know. Right. You don't always talk about the close. We, we right? neglect the regulatory the process. It's, it's not the a done uh, you deal. know the ongoing. Yeah. Uh, the EU has said yeah. today that they will approve the purchase of blah 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 whatever it is without restriction. Right. You know that takes yep. that stuff takes a long time. A long time. It does. And it I does. think it's going to take longer. I mean, we now have uh, and Lena Khan at the FTC a very much. Well, we don't have people person. paying attention to big tech. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, so I don't think <laughs> yep. any acquisition anymore is a cakewalk. Yeah. It really is. I agree. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> Code name pick of the week. Okay, this is one I'm doing with Paul because oh. it came, it came <laughs> See, up. See, this is we how we get chatting. into the book. This is the first step, everybody. Oh, no, we're, we're, no. We're, we're, collaboration. We're collaborating on a tip. Leads to no, so co-authoring. I, <laughs> no, so I had said to Paul recently. I yeah. forgot that the code name of Windows 7 was just Windows 7. That's what Raymond Chen said in his blog, "The right. Old New Thing," and then Paul yep. said, "Well." Technically, it was actually Vienna before it was Vienna. Windows 7. I remember that, yeah. I didn't remember uh, that. Raymond Chen but... is a dirty little liar. <laughs> no, 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 Raymond Chen is you the You're going to tell the Mozart, the Mozart connection. I will, yeah. This, this, is, is I had, I, well, this, is, this was a fever dream I had, I, and I mean that <laughs> literally. So mm -hmm. I just, I, 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 I don't mean to keep bringing it back to this, but I've been, you know, I've been writing this series uh, on the yeah. site about the history of Windows. I got through the Longhorn stuff, which I have often described as the, the nadir, that they, mm -hmm. you know, that, that I figured if I got through that, the rest of it would be easy, and I forgot because what happens after when, <laughs> Windows Vista and Longhorn is Steven Sanofsky. Yeah. I forgot. So on this trip, <laughs> among I forgot. I, and I have a couple of little articles I want to do before I get full blown into the Windows Seven stuff. The Longhorn server <laughs> was one, um, yeah. and some others. It doesn't matter, but. But I've been researching. I've been watching videos. I've been going through my archives. I've been reading emails. And oh my God. I've said this to Mary Jo probably m multiple times. I don't know if I can get through it. I, I, I literally have PTSD about this era. It, it's, I forgot. I, I blocked it out. Yeah. And I'll just yeah. give you two things just off the top of my head. You, you know, uh, Windows 7 was the code name for Windows 7. You know what else they said about Windows 7? That it was the seventh version of Windows. Remember that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was the claim. It was Mike Nash who they made say that, yeah. by the way. Mike Nash is a yeah. friend. He's a good guy. Um, that's nonsense. Um, he also, also the other Steven Sanofsky history rewriting is that Windows versions were like Star Trek movies. Every other one was great and every other one was terrible. That also doesn't hold up to any amount of scrutiny whatsoever. You have to completely change what is a Windows version to make that make any sense. You have to lie, basically. Mm -hmm. Everything they did was a lie. <laughs> so here's here's the well, I, I can't say the truth. I mean, here's my here's my interpretation of the the code name thing. We we just talked about this, I think, last week or the week before. Windows 
regimes, when you go from uh, Jim Alchin to Sanofsky to Myerson and now to Panay, are reactions to the group that came before. Yeah, it's a pendulum. Jim Alchin was yeah. pr uh, yeah. transparent and failed uh, publicly. Uh, mm -hmm. Steven Sanofsky was a reaction to that. He was private and secretive and um, undermining. And I, I just stopped there. And he uh, <laughs> was not going to be like Jim Alchin, right? Yeah. Um, but he was brought on to to run to, to build the next versions of Windows before Jim Alchin was done. It was a very little thing in, a, in a, an announcement that had other reorg implications. But mm -hmm. he was working on two projects that were named before he got there, uh, Fiji and Vienna. And uh, Fiji was technically Windows Vista Service Pack 1, but they actually later reused that name for a version of Media <laughs> Center, I think. And I think yeah, they did that they did. to obscure that. And I think they did Windows 7 because they didn't want to use the name from before that was Vienna. However, in, when they in, before they even talked about the product, they started up a blog called Engineering 7. And it was about how they were building Windows 7. It was a million words over two and a half years, zero content whatsoever. Blah, 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 blah. It was our first introduction to how he goes on and on and on and on and on. <laughs> and I swear to God, this came... I, I'm not kidding you. I, I, had, I slept so poorly the week we were in Mexico. But in the middle of the night, I was awake. It was 3.30 in the morning or 4 o'clock in the morning, something like that. I'm laying in bed and this is what, is what went through my head. There's a blog post he wrote very early on. It'd be, I'll, I'll be quoting it soon. Where he explained... He talked about Mozart and... Someone had said, is the Windows group getting too big? Is there too many things? Are there too many people? Mm. And he says, this is like Mozart and people complaining too many that there notes. are too many notes. Too many notes. And, he's, and, and he went, you know, in his own way, he went on and on and on and on. But if you, if you break it down, like, it, you know, Word has like this feature that can break down things and give you the summary. Yeah. The summary was Steven Sanofsky thinks he's Mozart. <laughs> <laughs> and this thing was called Vienna. Because <laughs> at that time, I think they had just changed the name. Do you think they because changed he wanted it to, to go mock him? He, no, no. He uh, he wanted to go. He wanted. Listen. He was the. He was the epitome of not invented here. You got to remember this guy changed everything because he didn't want anything from the past. He was going to change the file system in Windows, which had been Windows NTFS, or NTFS. Sorry, since the beginning of Windows NT in 1993, because it wasn't invented by his team. Like <laughs> th this was. There's a pathology no, then, here that's really. I don't know if you remember this. Up. Do you remember he he wanted to do away with code names? Like they tried to stamp yeah, out code of course, names of course. during his regime. Um, yeah, I don't think he that wanted to be <laughs> stuck with a label. Yeah, so right. Windows Seven was the next version. They came. They yeah. junked up this crazy rationale for it was the seventh version. Yeah, and then yeah. and it was of course Windows. What it was probably Windows six point two or something under the covers. Yeah. It was a whole thing about whether it was a minor release or a major release and all the rash. He went mm -hmm. on and on and on and on and on. And if you <laughs> added it all up, you're, you're like, oh, you just proved you proved in your own words it's a minor release. No, it's a major release. <laughs> Windows Seven was Windows Vista Service Pack three. Yeah. Period. <laughs> like. I um he way too much you got and the other thing I I, I could go I'm I'm gonna go on and on he he God he had such a great uh, public respect <laughs> because of what they did with Office what did they do mm. with Office there were no major new features of Office like ever it was just iterate 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 and the reason they did the ribbon <laughs> not was you know remember the you know, too many commands we can't do blah blah yeah. blah yeah okay that was something to that for sure. But it was because of all, because no one was upgrading anymore. They used to mm -hmm. arbitrarily change the UI of Office so you could tell which version of it, it was, right? Yeah. But there was, no one would upgrade because they'd look it off and say, it looks the same, I don't need, I don't, why, why, why would I upgrade? They up, 50% right. of the reason they went to the ribbon was to get people to upgrade because it looked like it was something new. Yeah. yeah. So that's what Windows 7 was. Windows 7 was take the Office yeah. model, iterate, and apply it to Windows. And then I think there was a lot of ego involved and they were like, we're going to make a big bang now <laughs> and we're going to do Windows 8. And that was, yeah. you know, that know. worked out great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Should have kept that anyway, one that's, quiet. Th that's my theory. Yeah. I, because I had heard about Vienna multiple times. I have, sli I have Microsoft internal slide decks that use this term. Yeah. This was the next version of Windows. Now, I love, I love the Mozart and Vienna 
connection, yeah. right? Like, cause I, right. I, like, I'm like, oh yeah, okay. This all like falls into place now, right? <laughs> Paul, you yep. really enjoy being a, a Windows or a Microsoft historian. I think he does. This he does. either well, should be your next book or better yet, yeah, Microsoft should just hire you. <laughs> to do this. I mean, well, here's the problem. So, um, I'm an outsider, there. right? Yeah. Uh, one no, of they the want to sanitize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah this is, wrong. um, yeah. yeah. You got to understand, and also, Sadowski right now is writing his own little, little, he doesn't write anything little. Right. He's writing his own version of this. Now, he was on the, he was, yeah. he led the team. I mean, uh, he could easily refute anything I just said by saying he wasn't there. I was there, and here's the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The problem is we have a rich history of that guy lying right. again and again and I, again. I and prefer again. the outsider. Uh, so insider. I have no, I don't have any, an agenda. No. In fact, like I said, I had kind of blocked this out. I, I'm going through my archives and I'm thinking, I'm like, oh my God, I completely forgot. Can Here's another, I'll just give this. you one more. Yeah. This is, this is the first time I met this guy was that I told the story. It was at the office reviewers workshop, which was for office 2007, I think. And I had, Leaked all this stuff about this product ahead of time. He had emailed me, told me to, he was, they would send me a cease and desist order if I didn't take it down. And so I took it down. <laughs> I met him, this is a year later. I, meet, I met him in person. I walked up, he's talking to two other people. I didn't want to interrupt. I just wanted to say hi. He looked at my name badge, saw who I was, did the up and down scan, and then just went back to talking to the people, ignored me completely. Now, the next time I contact, the next time I heard from him, this is the email. I have this off the top of my head, but this is roughly what he wrote. I remember this exactly. He said, howdy, comma. I know it's been a while since you and I have interacted. I wanted to let you know. The last time you we interacted, you sent me a cease to desist order. What are you talking about? <laughs> like, like, what, what, like, that was the email I got. That was the next one. I, so, yeah, I have a, a, yeah, maybe I have a little bit of a <laughs> an issue to deal a with here. Chip problem. on your shoulder there. No I forgot problem. this stuff. Like, I'm going through it. And I'm like, oh, my God, right, this guy. So this was, they didn't name it after Vienna beef. This was a different kind of... The city. Right. Yes. The city. The city. Um, the city. Home, yeah, and home they, remember, in the 90s, they did city names. Chicago, yeah. Cairo, yeah. Mm -hmm. Daytona, yeah. um, Detroit was one. Right. Right. Um, yeah. Boston Mozart was, was the code name for the first version of Visual Studio. This Chip is many Willa. years later. Yeah. Chip Will. <laughs> okay. Um <laughs> They could, but if yeah, they I really don't know. wanted to tighten the Mozart connection, they should have named it Salzburg, but I guess Vienna's close enough. Yeah. Vienna's well, the name. other thing is, like, you know, um, uh, the Windows code names at the end there were, um, law, well, I'm sorry, were Whistler and Blackcomb. Yeah, yeah, they were after. Happened, those are mountains. Mm -hmm. This is like the aggressive testosterone guy thing, right. like, you know, whatever. And Longhorn is the bar in the middle because they there was no yeah. other place in the middle, so Longhorn was, the, it was that. And it's like, mm -hmm. from there, it's like, well, where do we go from there? It's like, you know, International destinations, you yeah. know, yeah, a little prettier kind of places, uh, cosmopolitan. Perhaps, and it makes know. it's just for they do it for Mary Jo's benefit. That's the real. They do the just, to mm, happy, just to keep me happy, so I interested. can check out all the code names. And I should correct myself: Space Force is on Netflix, not HBO. The Netflix. Show. I'm sorry, Discord, <laughs> I can't remember. The Discord <laughs> reminded me. No, yeah. no, they, it's a, it's a, it's by the way, it's an easy to digest show. They're like thirty minute episodes. There's, there's not many of them. I, I like the first season. season I started the second season, and I'm, I think I. Oh, I get through it. It's good. It's worth it. It's, you know, it? it's, okay. it's good. Yeah, we like it's it. It's a little slapstick, but it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, it's good. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love Steve. Crow. You got to watch it just for the Windows 10 update thing. It's I will. Fun. I know. Now I will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Some of these HD editors suggesting maybe for the cruise you could do a, a talk on the history of. Uh, Windows. Right, we'll say I'm going to be in a convalescence home by that point if I get through <laughs> this. Era. I don't. You know, I've already started the couple. Uh, you'll see. It's. You'll see. <laughs> it's. 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 Okay. It gets interesting. I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe you and I and Mary Jo should share a beer right now. Time yeah. for our beer pick yes. of the week. Paul might even like this beer. Right. I'm just I saying. know I will. Uh, so I haven't done a lot of the old classic, um, very famous beers as my beer pick. But this past week, I got to have this beer uh, that I've had before in the past. And I remember how fantastic Belgian beers are. Yes. Um, Brasserie Cantillon, one of the most famous brewers in Brussels. They make beers called Lambics. So Lambics mm. are a very famous style where usually they blend multiple kinds of different beers together. Um, usually they're not fully fermented, um, so they undergo various fermentations. Sometimes they're fermented by leaving them open so that the yeast in the air can just ah, naturally natural ferment yeast. it. Yeah. 
right? Sometimes it's they ferment it in a bottle, and they it, that's when you have bottle fermented. These beers, they they are so classic and so well made that they last for twenty years. Like when you when you get one of these beers, you could hold it for twenty years, and it would still be fantastic when you drink it. So this one I had is one of their most famous ones. It's called the Classic Goose, and um, I just can't even explain how delicious this beer is. It's you take a sip and it's just so refreshing and light. It's like five percent delightful. Mm. It would pair with any food. Very fresh, um, a little bit floral tasting, and I, it just makes me remember like, yeah, we have all these cool, fun beers that I always make picks. You know, add chocolate, add graham crackers, add this, add that. You know, sometimes just a simple. From simply fermented beer from a brewery dating back to 1900 is what you want. And if it is, look for Brasserie Cantillon if you can find their beers. They're hard to find in the U.S. They're a little easier to find in Europe. I love... If I just had to drink Belgian beer forever, I'd probably be happy. Although, it's yeah. nice to have the brewery. Yeah. By the way, this guy, Devin, looks like he drinks... Let's see if I get a close-up of his profile. <laughs> looks like he drinks that beer for sure. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, could see, I think I saw him when I was there. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's one of his reign to rule them all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a Gandalf beer. Mm -hmm. Brasserie Cantillon. Classic. And you say Goose. 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 That's how I think you say it. It's like Goose. Uh, yeah. Goose. Yeah. yeah. I used to say Goose. I don't know if that's wrong, Who right? Knows? But Who knows? Yeah. It's probably Flemish. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you've done it all. You've seen it all. <laughs> you've you've heard it all, and now it's time to go home. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, you don't have to go home. You just can't stay here. Exactly. No, you can't yeah. stay here because Twig's coming up. But Mary Jo Foley uh, is, of course, uh, her home is at allaboutmicrosoft.com on ZDNet, and uh, that's where she talks about all of this stuff all the time, all day long. <laughs> Constantly filing. Pretty much. <laughs> Paul Therott typing as well at therott.com, yes. T-H-U-R-R-O-T-T dot com. Go there, and you know what? Cheer him up. Sign up for a premium subscription. <laughs> It'll make him happy. Uh, maybe not, but it, you'll be happy because you'll get, you'll get all his extra stuff. He also has a very good book, The Field Guide to Windows 10 at uh, leanpub.com. <coughs> Highly recommended. Uh, both Paul and Mary Jo will show up here next week, and I hope you will too. We do the shows Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1900 UTC. The live stream, uh, live.twit.tv. If you're watching live, you can chat live at irc.twit.tv or in our Club Twit Discord channel for Windows Weekly. That's open all the time, but people, you know, flock in there during the show, of course. Um <laughs> But you don't have to watch live. That's the whole idea of a podcast. You can watch it at your convenience. On-demand versions of everything we do, including the audio and the video, available at twit.tv slash WW. Uh, there's also a YouTube channel dedicated to uh, Windows Weekly, and you can subscribe in your favorite podcast player. It doesn't have to be Spotify. You can listen to it in anything you want. Uh, if you do uh, subscribe, you'll get it automatically. And please leave us a five-star review so... Everybody knows about Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley and the fabulous Windows Weekly. Thank you to <laughs> cheer up, Paul. You, I'm jealous. You're gonna be, you're gonna be so happy. And we he might will. be your neighbors, your upstairs neighbors. Think I, about that. <laughs> I was telling about, yeah. You, you get ready for the uh, six o'clock in the morning knock on the door because I need sugar or. Uh, you know, <laughs> whatever that is. Hey, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to bring a cocktail up. <laughs> yep. Can we enjoy yep. your roof? We understand you have a view. We have drinks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm so tempted. I am yeah. so tempted. That sounds heaven. You should just, you guys should go down and just visit the area. We should. You like the neighborhood. Roma's great. It, yeah, we fell in love with the You know, earthquakes are a concern, but that's a modern so, oh, building. Oh, by the way, I, oh, that was the other thing. I, I knew I forgot to start. So um, we experienced an earthquake when we were there. Yeah. Oh wow! Didn't even feel. Didn't even know what happened. So this is what we were, we're in the cab, and heading to the first meeting with those guys, and uh, heading to Polanco actually, and we're going by the the giant park and the, uh, the one of the big museums there, and there's uh, the siren is going off, and I said I said to my wife, 
That's like the siren at the beginning of a science fiction movie. Yeah. And then at the in five minutes, everyone else is dead. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. it's the end of the world siren. Yeah. And we're like, okay, whatever. And then we went and we had the meeting. And we go to the place at the, it's a lawyer, um, a notary's office. And there's a news story about an earthquake. And I'm thinking, I, and I'm looking at the pictures and I said, uh, where, where is that? <laughs> and I said, that's here. I'm like, what? You didn't even feel and it. And it was, it was a 5.9, 5.7, oh, something like that. fairly strong. And we didn't feel a thing. Yeah. Wow. So I, They've had some bad ones in uh, Mexico City, but I'm sure modern yeah, construction yeah, yeah, is. Yeah. It's designed safe. specifically yeah, for that purpose. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, man. I'm, I'm, maybe I just buy it myself. <laughs> <laughs> just buy it myself. Sure. How's sure. the internet? Uh, I don't know exactly, but right oh, up the street. That's the first um, thing I'd find out. Well, because it's it's actually, I, I'm told it's hard to know exactly, but the place, we were two doors down in Airbnb, it was 160. Oh, fine. Mm -hmm. so, I could do this They do have fiber. There. They have fiber. They have fiber. Oh. Mm -hmm. And they have tequila. Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley, have a wonderful week. See you next time on Windows Weekly. Bye-bye. Hey, I'm Rod Pyle, editor of Ad Astra Magazine, and each week I'm joined by Tarek Malik, the editor-in-chief over at Space.com, in our new This Week in Space podcast. Every Friday, Tarek and I take a deep dive into the stories that define the new space age. What's NASA up to? When will Americans once again set foot on the moon? And how about those samples from the Perseverance rover? When are those coming home? What the heck has Elon Musk done now? In addition to all the latest and greatest in space exploration, we'll take an occasional look at bits of spaceflight history that you probably never heard of, and all with an eye towards having a good time along the way. Check us out in your favorite podcatcher.